Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about Onshape, an awesome free CAD program that I have been using for the last couple of weeks. Now fans of my channel may remember me talking about Design Spark Mechanical, another great free CAD program. You can click on the screen or on the link below to see my video on it here. However, while Design Spark Mechanical is great for quickly creating designs, it lacks some of the more advanced features that some users might need. Needing those features, like multi-part assemblies, is why I use SolidWorks for some of my projects, like my 3D printed animatronic Caterpie. Again, you can click on the link to see my design of that here. One of the co-founders of SolidWorks left for a new venture with the dream of a truly browser-based CAD program, and from that dream came Onshape. Let's see what it has to offer. So first of all, what is Onshape? Onshape is a fully browser-based parametric modeling software. That means that there is no need to download software, and since it's done on a browser, you can do this on any kind of mobile device. That is actually what they're aiming for, is to bring CAD into the hands of tablets and mobile phones and anything that can access the internet. But enough talking, let's show you what Onshape can do for you. So when you create a new part, it'll drop you into the Part Studio, and this is where you can start to model. Now users of SolidWorks or AutoCAD will find this very familiar, but new users will also find it pretty intuitive. The way that parametric modeling works is you generally start with a two-dimensional sketch, and then you extrude that sketch out into three dimensions. So we can begin by pressing the sketch button and clicking on the plane that we want to begin to draw on. And from here, we can start creating our first sketch. Uh, so we have a bunch of different sketch tools available to you, everything that you'd normally expect, like lines, squares, and circles, uh, to things like polygons, splines, and even text. So there's a lot of options when you're creating these sketches. So if we start to sketch, you can see that if I select the circle tool, I can start in the middle and just start sketching. So I have a circle here. Um, as you start to draw, Onshape will try to infer what kind of constraints you want. So you can see here the dotted lines mean that I want the center of the next circle to be horizontal to the center of the first circle. So I can click and drag, and now these two circles will always be horizontal to each other. And there are plenty of other constraints that you can apply when you're drawing. So if I select the line and hover over a previous part of the sketch, this will say that the endpoint of the line will lie on this circle. So I can just connect these two circles up and do the same down here, connect the two circles. And so now these endpoints will always be connected to the respective circles. And if you need to add a constraint afterwards, so all the constraints are up here, we have a variety such as coincidence, um, concentric, parallel, uh, to things such as tangential and even perpendicular constraints. Um, there's even symmet symmetricals and uh, all kinds of other constraints that you can use to really define what you're trying to do. So for instance, if you need to add one afterwards, I can click the line and the circle and say that it's going to be tangent to that circle. So I'm gonna do the same with all of these so that all of these lines are tangential to all of the circles. And look at that, we have defined all of the constraints for this, but you can see that although I defined the constraints, when I drew the shape, I didn't apply any dimensions. We can do that using the dimension tool. So if I click on here and click on the dimensions, you can see that I can just start typing how big I want the diameter of that circle to be. So say, you know, 95. I can shrink this one down to 35. You can apply constraints to pretty much anything that you've drawn. For instance, I can apply a constraints between the two endpoints. And say that's uh, 130 and as I update the dimensions it's going to reflect the changes in the sketch and you can even do constraints such as if I draw a circle I can say that the circle the distance between the two circles are of a particular value so I can say 15 degrees and as I've dimensioned everything the sketch has turned black to indicate that I have fully constrained this sketch and we are ready to continue to the next steps so once we finish the sketch, we can exit out of here, and now we have a sketch, and it appears here on the left under the file history. So this is the feature tree, and it will show each of the features that you've created chronological order, but I'll get back to that in a second. Now that we've created a sketch, we can start to extrude it, and I want to select the sketch that we've just created, and it will start to create that into a three-dimensional model. So you can have it symmetric around the center line, um, and you can 
do a variety of different extrusions up to a particular face, up to a particular part, or up to the next surface that it meets. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do a blind, uh, I don't know, say 50 millimeters, and click that, and there we go. We have a three-dimensional model, and you can see that it's added the extrude feature into our feature tree. So from here, we have a variety of options. You can click on a face. And on any face, you can start to create another sketch. So for instance, I'm going to draw on the top of here. And I'm just going to create a simple peg. So if I select the midpoint, and it will say, hey, look at that. I want that to be in the middle. So I've created a simple sketch. And I can hit extrude and start to create a kind of peg that comes off of here. You can click and drag the arrow to increase the size. Or again, you can type it over here in the extrusion list. And just like the options in the sketch, there are a variety of options for the three-dimensional uh, modifications. We have the extrusions. Um, you can do revolutions um, and sweeps and lofts and all kinds of really advanced features. Uh, you can also use the fillet tool or chamfer tool to easily create fillets. So if I click on that tool and I click on this over here, you can see that it's created that fillet for me. So I can just start adding in different uh, surfaces to create a fillet on. And again, you can change the dimensions of the fillets anytime you please, and just select that. We have the ability to create uh, holes. So they have kind of a hole wizard, where you can say a simple hole, and you can see the diagram of what it will create here. Uh, you can do counter bores, and you can put all the dimensions there, or counter sinks, which make it very easy to create screw holes um, and the like on your models. Uh, if you don't want to use this hole wizard, the way that you would create a hole without first drawing it into a sketch, you can do it afterwards. If I create a new sketch and say I want to create a hole down at this end, I can define my model. I can again give it a dimension, uh, say 15. And you would then use the extrude tool, but instead of using new or add, you would click remove. And I want to remove this sketch and you can see how it's cutting into that surface. So if I select through all, it'll create a hole directly through the part. And click accept to create that and add that into the file tree. And the usefulness of these parametric modeling techniques is at any point, you can go back to an original sketch, modify a dimension. So say that 95 was a little too small for this. I really needed 125. The model will update. So once you've updated the sketch, every step will be uh, applied, those changes will be applied to every step underneath. And if you need to roll back and see a particular point, you can grab the rollback bar and see what the feature looked like and then diagnose what it looks like afterwards. So you can see the effect of you going through your history. Another useful feature is the shell tool. If you create that and you click a face that you want to remove, it'll automatically create shells for you. And you can give it the uh, the thickness of the walls that you want. So you can, again, modify that. Um, one thing that you can do with any of these tools, you may have noticed this bar down here. You can slide that to see what it looked like before and what it will look like afterwards. So you can get a feel for if that's the, uh, the right effect that you were going for. So yes, this looks good to me. So I'm going to commit that shell. And it's been added to our feature tree. So you may have noticed over here in the left, there's this parts area. We currently only have one part, uh, but we can add more parts as our design calls for. So if I jump back to this extrude, you can see that we had all of these options up here and we looked at the add and we looked at the remove, but there's other options. So if I click the new, it will add a new part here in the list and it will treat this as an entirely separate part. So when I click accept, you can see that the fillets that we created only apply to this new part and not the part that we were working with before. And that can be useful when we want to duplicate parts. So if I were to click on part two and click on, say, the mirror tool, I can select this midpoint as the mirror and it will create a copy of this feature mirrored across this line, this plane. And if I collect yes, it will then add that feature to our parts. And since this mirror had the add tool and not new, it added it to all of the parts that it touched. So that's an easy way to go and duplicate features. There's a mirror tool both for 
uh, three-dimensional features, but also a mirror tool in the sketch tools. So we've looked at how to create a part in Onshape. What other stuff does Onshape provide? So if I were to jump over to another one of my projects, um, you can see that this, I have multiple part studios. I have a version of, if I roll this to the end, I have a version of my Moto G cell phone, and I also have a stand that I'm designing for that cell phone. So these are separate part studios. But what Onshape can do is you can create assemblies between different parts. So I currently have an assembly where I show the phone that I've created sitting on the stand that I'm designing. So this allows me to see how the phone will fit on this stand, and I can then go back and make a modification to the stand, and then the assembly will be updated. So I can see how that change affects the entire assembly. And the assemblies have a variety of different mates. So you can say that one part can slide against another, or you can say that they're firmly bound. Um, there's all kinds of different matings. I'm not going to take a look at er each and every one of these. There's a variety of really nice help topics that will show you exactly what all these mates do. But they allow you to do very complex assemblies right here inside Onshape. It is pretty amazing. The mating tools are pretty powerful. For example, in this wind meter, we have a bunch of mates between all of these different gears and shafts. So as we spin the turbines, you can notice how the gears move along bound by those mate constraints. So you can do some pretty complex geometries and assemblies using these tools. And when you're finished designing a part, you can right click on a parts and go to export and export that part in a variety of different formats. So you have your parasolid or step files. Uh, you can even export as SolidWorks or for your 3D printers out there, you can export straight into STLs to make it very easy to 3D print the objects that you've created. You can also export parts as individual files. So for instance, since I have a part that has NinjaFlex, which is the blue, and then ABS in the orange, I can export those as different files and then print them out on my dual extruder. So if you're still not convinced that Onshape can do what you want it to, or you're a little hesitant and would like to see some tutorials, they have provided a lovely page of tutorials and samples with a bunch of public parts that you can jump in and it will teach you, at least for the tutorials, each and every step needed in order to create that part. Um, and the tutorials can get pretty in-depth over just a small topic so that it will show you exactly what you need to know. But they also have sample projects such as prosthetic legs that are fully designed and you can go through the file history and see exactly how it was created. There are some pretty awesome projects in here, so I would highly recommend checking out their tutorials and samples. Onshape also wants to be the first fully collaborative CAD software out there. So for any of these parts, when they're public, you can invite other people to jump in the parts and edit them alongside you, which is pretty cool. You can think of them as the Google Docs of CAD software. So you can have multiple users modifying the same files, and to faci help facilitate that, they have this whole versioning and branch system built into the software. So at any point when you're done, you can save a version, you can give it a name, so uh, first model, um, give it a description, and you can save it, and it will create a new version. And people can branch off this part, make their own changes, um, and it's a fully collaborative environment. It's pretty awesome. You can also make a part private or public. If it's public, everyone can view it, um, but you can also change that setting to allow anyone to save a copy of it or to modify it directly. Um, so there's a lot of tools for groups trying to work on a project. It makes it very easy to do that. So there's currently three tiers of users. Uh, the first tier is a free tier. Everyone can create an account and jump in and start creating documents. However, you are limited to 10 private documents and 100 megabytes of private storage, uh, which is a pretty small amount. But you have unlimited public documents and 5 gigabytes of total storage. So if you're okay with some of your designs being public, uh, then this will work perfectly fine for you. Uh, for instance, I plan on when I finish with the design, heck, I like the open source spirits. I would love other people to see the stuff that I've created. 
Um, so you can see that my Moto G project is public, and I will actually link to that down below so you can check out the work that I'm currently doing creating that uh, phone stand for my cell phone. The second tier is the professional tier. It's $100 per month per user, and that's targeted at corporations that will actually be using this uh, as part of their business. So I don't see that most people would want to jump up. Um, the professional tier does give you unlimited private documents and unlimited storage, that kind of stuff. But it is pretty pricey unless you're part of a company that CADs all day and will actually use Onshape for a majority of their time. But that's about the only limitation that the free suite has, is these 10 private documents and 100 megabytes of private storage. The other kind of features that the, uh, the professional and enterprise grade gives you um, is security features and unlimited private document storage. Um, not stuff that most people would need. So I would say sign up for Onshape, give it a try, and see if it does what you want it to do. So I wanted to keep this video somewhat short so I didn't dive into every feature that Onshape provides. If you are curious to see what this software can do, or if you want to see tutorials, again, you can visit the tutorials and sample page to get a feel for exactly what you can do within Onshape. So enough of me talking. I hope that I showed you how awesome Onshape can be and convinced you to go out and sign up for a free account and give it a try yourself. I would love to see some of the stuff that you've created. If you want to put a link to your public documents uh, that you created in Onshape down below, I would love to check it out. And who knows, maybe even collaborate with some of you to see just how the version branches and the collaboration tools work within Onshape because you can't really collaborate with yourself. So guys, I'm Hoffman Engineering. I was just showing you Onshape. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.